I've just had an LED lamp, uh, the one in my bathroom, start flickering on and off for a while. It would do it intermittently, then it would work for a while, and then it failed completely. And I left it for a while to see if it would explode, if it was one of the types with the under-voltage rated capacitor, but it sadly didn't explode, so here it is. So uh, let's see if we can fix it. For a start, it's got the 400 volt capacitor in it, uh, which is why it didn't do anything nasty. Oh, let's get let's try try this out and see if it lights now. So let's get a socket, and this is where all my cables just instantly tangle up. That's that's a good start. Okay, so uh, here's a socket. I shall plug it in. Is it going to light? No, it's not. And it's not responding to being pinged. OK. So let's uh, take a look now. that I've fully charged that 400 volt capacitor up to the hilt. In fact, we'll just short that out right now with a screwdriver. That had discharged. Good. Right. Nothing really obvious. Uh, no obvious bad connections, although obviously I can't just... You know, it'd probably take a bit of metering, this, but there's nothing visible, like, in the sense of a solder joint that's uh, a miss. So let's pop this out completely. These just sort of jam in. And see if there's anything really obvious, like a broken solder connection. I see a little black dot in this LED. Let's take a wee look at that through the microscope. Oh, there is a little black crater in that. It really, it's burnt a wee hole and the resin's all burnt round it. I wonder if that's just been arcing contact then, I wonder uh, which part of the LED that was. Um, what can I use to test that? Let's get a bit of wire. It's a solid core wire. And I'll just improvise with my LED tester. This one. So I'll get a matching bit of wire. And we'll just poke this across the LEDs and see if that one actually lights. I could just bridge it out, I suppose. But let's see if it is actually faulty. That might be some manufacturing thing that they've uh, burnt the LED in some way, but I doubt it. Someone's asking about my choice of wire strippers. Um, I've tried all the automatic ones, but while I was working with uh, Hussman Refrigeration, uh, part of the time spent there was working in their uh, panel building shop. And the guys, they're all used for continuous daily use, they used these adjustable uh, wire strippers. Now these have a metal V at the end, uh, two metal Vs that overlap, and they've got this adjustable thumb screw that you pretty much lock to the size of the wire you're going to strip. And I have found these to be by far one of the most reliable, consistent ones, because you can set it to the point that it's going to bite down but not bite into the actual the wire itself. It purely bites into the insulation and then pulls it off cleanly. So the, my choice is this type, which is also one of the most basic type of wire strippers, but um, I guess that's just a proven type of device. So let's uh, shove these wires into the tester. And then poke that LED with them and see if we can make it light. So let's find polarity. Let's uh, try it on all the LEDs here. Wrong polarity. So that one's lighting brightly. That one's lighting brightly. That one's brightly, but okay, um, let's see. Oh, maybe I should actually do the side that's actually faulty here. So, um, this one's lighting brightly. It's inc incidentally the Source of the light from these ones is very close to where that black dot is. And that one is not lighting, so that black dot is a defective LED. So let's bridge that LED out and see if we can 
reactivate this this uh, uh, light. So uh, I'll just reuse this bit of wire, in fact. At this point, it'd be nice just to change the LED, but I don't think that's going to happen because I don't have any spare LEDs of this size. And desoldering the larger surface mount components, is, is, it's kind of better if you um, have one of those tweezer soldering irons that gets both sides. So I'm going to flow some solder on. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Flow some solder on that side. Melting the LED slightly in the process, but that's okay because it's dead anyway. Tin that wire. And I'm going to stick that wire onto that side. Hopefully not shorting anything else out. These LEDs are and this capacitive dropper socket are all just wired in series. That's quite a messy solder joint, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be too pretty. And I fold this round, I'm going to leave a wee bit slack in fact, um, and I'm going to crop it so that I can solder the other end onto the other side of the LED. So I'm just going to bend that so that it kind of springs against the other side of the LED of its own accord. That'll make it easier for soldering. And then I'm going to solder the other side. Looks pretty good. I'm going to let the solder cool for a second just to actually set fully and then I'm just going to fold that link up out the way of the other LED and just fold it over the dead one. Okay, right. Well, I think that's possibly fixed. So let's uh, shove that back in there. See how confident I am, I'm just sticking it in. This, this is where it either goes bang or it works. And it works. So, uh, yep, one dead LED uh, took out the whole lamp, so that's quite interesting. But also, it's interesting that LED showed, because it had basically arced where it had gone open circuit because it had the high voltage across it, um, it's indicated where which LED is faulty by the black dot, so that's useful to know. Uh, another thing worth mentioning, some of these lamps, the really big corn cob ones, use, um, have the strips of LEDs, but they have lots in parallel. So shorting one out like this may actually disturb the sort of series parallel balance. If that's the case, then you may be just better cutting out that whole section, but, um, or changing the LED. But uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a, that's a useful little fix.